Hi, it's me again, Dmitry Demyshev, your coach in the world of dispatching. We've reached an advanced module of our training. You can already proudly call yourself a dispatcher. Your level of knowledge is quite developed at this point. Now it's time to grow to the title of a professional dispatcher. A key stage of growth is in-depth knowledge of the freight market and its analysis tools, as well as professional negotiating and networking skills. In this module, I will provide practical tools and useful information to support them. Now, it's especially important to take notes of every insight, every tool and its explanation, so that you can simply open a notebook and repeat what I'm going to teach you today. So, let's get going. Transportation company objectives. In the third module, when we talked about planning, we determined that the most important first step to planning is to identify the goals of the transportation company and each individual truck driver. If you remember, we distinguished between two basic types of goals. The first one uh, was financial goals. They are calculated in miles and dollars, and there are three main indicators. Total mileage, uh, which is the total number of miles traveled by the truck, gross rate, the total income the truck generated, and rate per mile, how much money the truck earned for each mile traveled. This one determines the margin of the trucking company because each mile costs money, you know, driver's salary, fuel, and so on. The second type of uh, goal is operational. This can include uh, the areas and states in which the trucking company operates, the lengths of the load that the driver prefers, for example, maybe he prefers short one-day trips of up to 700 miles or two-day trips of 1,000 miles or more or coast-to-coast -coast loads that travel through the whole country, such as Los Angeles to New York, which is about 2,800 miles. That's a load for the whole week, from Monday through Friday. By the way, uh, working as a dispatcher for a carrier that runs coast-to-coast -coast loads is quite awesome. You put in one day of hard work, find the best load and then you don't need to search for any more loads for this truck for the whole week. Pretty sweet, right? What else can be included in operational goals? Uh, such factors as uh, driver's home time, so how often you need to bring a driver back home, uh, load weight restrictions, commodity restrictions. Uh, for example, some drivers will not transport pork or alcohol for religious or cultural reasons, and so on. Based on these parameters uh, provided to you by the carrier at the beginning of the week, a dispatcher sets himself a weekly task for each truck. This task should be quite simple and clear, so you can look at it quickly and refresh your memory when you switch from one truck to another. It can be written out on a sheet of paper, printed out, hung up in your workspace or stored in an electronic document. An example uh, of such a plan could be as follows. A weekly plan, let's say driver Jason, truck number 5502, drive van, location on Monday, Chicago, Illinois, ready to go anytime, anywhere, weekly miles should be above 2,500, weekly minimum gross $6,500, average rate per mile should be above 2.5, maximum weight 44,000 pounds and has to come back to Chicago next Monday. Based on this task, a dispatcher will typically build an approximate route plan. Of course, as you sit down and start calling on loads, that plan may change, because, I mean, a really nice load might pop up in another unplanned area, or the driver could get held up at a delivery and lose a day when the plan goes to waste. It's normal in logistics when all the plans fall apart. That's why we learn how to make them, so you can assess the situation at any time without any panic and adjust your plan to account for any unforeseen occurrences. A view at the freight market. So, in order to start creating a plan, let's start by looking at a map of the United States. America is made up of 50 states, and when a carrier wants to say that he drives all over the country, he often says, I run all 48 states. That's because Hawaii and Alaska are not part of the trucking area. Hawaii is an island, and to get to Alaska, you first have to drive through all of Canada. Apart from states, in trucking, we also divide the entire country into zones. There are five key zones that we identify. Northeast, Southeast, Midwest, Southwest, and West. Americans are a bit strange with their geography. 
For instance, Ohio State, which is right here in the east, is actually located in a zone called Midwest. Makes no sense to me, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. The United States can also be divided into smaller zip zones. A zip code is a five-digit postal code. Each city and town has its own zip code, and the first digit of that zip code is responsible for a wide area that may include several states or parts of states at once. When searching for a load or posting a truck on a load board, you can designate a movement zone using one of the 10 zip zones instead of having to write out each individual state. The division of these zones can be found by downloading the appendix to this lesson. The state and zip zones are good for a general understanding of how the truck moves. We can use them to plot a route when we plan the number of miles. For example, we can say that we will send our driver from Chicago first down to Georgia, then to New Jersey. From there, we'll take him back to Midwest on the way home to zone Z4. And from there, we will book him a short load back to Chicago. That's already a pretty good plan. That plan would get the driver anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 miles, which is great for one week. However, our planning doesn't end there. It's not enough to just decide on states. The shipment of goods doesn't happen all over the state at the same time. There are places in a certain state where it's easy to find loads from, and then there are places where freight is scarce, and you have to deadhead, drive empty, for a long time to get to the right load. Take Texas, for example, which is the largest state by area. East of Texas is one of the key transportation areas in the United States. There's the city of Dallas, and just south of that is a major international port in Houston. Sending a truck to one of the cities is usually a good idea. Freight is shipped from these points throughout the country year-round. However, central and western Texas is a desert area. Sending a truck to San Angelo, which is geographically in the heart of Texas, will make it difficult to find loads and you'll very likely have to move the truck empty for hundreds of miles. So, how do you identify the right areas within the state? Consider the following map, which is also available for download in the appendix of this lesson. Each US state has key market areas. These areas represent a major city, an economic or manufacturing center, and its area, a number of small towns that are close to it and that benefit from their geographic location. The bigger the city, the more it trades with other cities, the more demand it has for trucking. It all makes sense. Every state has a certain number of such areas. For example, Texas has a lot of them. Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, McAllen, Laredo, El Paso. In New Mexico, there's only one, Albuquerque, home of the great chemist Walter White from Breaking Bad. And in Nevada, for example, there are two, Reno and Las Vegas. Of all the areas on the map, we can distinguish the main ones. Transportation hubs, uh, these are the junctions of several modes of transportation, such as air, rail, and so on, working together to serve transit, local, and urban traffic. So, major transportation hubs are Boston, Massachusetts, Cleveland, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Kansas City, Kansas, St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, and San Francisco, California. Next, major logistics centers, uh, which include the highest number of distribution facilities, are Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, Colorado, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Little Rock, Arkansas, Nashville, Tennessee, Columbus, Ohio, and Detroit, Michigan. Then, cities with key international ports for import and export. These are uh, New York City, state of New York, New Jersey, state of New Jersey, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, Florida, Mobile, Alabama, New Orleans, Louisiana, once again, Houston, Texas, Los Angeles, California, as well as Oakland, California, and Seattle, Washington. And finally, the so-called inland ports. Uh, these are Stockton, California, Inland Empire, California, once again, Fort Worth, Texas, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas, Chicago, Illinois, 
Columbus, Ohio, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Atlanta, Georgia. Key market areas are usually connected between one another by the key transportation corridors of the country, the highway system. This highway system is called interstate. Each highway has its own number. For example, I-95 runs all along the east coast, and I-5 runs all along the west coast. Memorizing all the key cities in each state is a long and painful task, especially since trucking activity will vary from zone to zone at different times of the year. To get started, you can use one simple rule of thumb. Looking at each available load, you will need to go into the map and input the city to which it's headed. The first thing to look is whether the unloading point is near a major city. If the unloading point is close to the water, see how far away the nearest major port is. This will give you an initial idea of how difficult or easy it will be to get out of that city when looking for your next load. Your next step will of course be to log back into the load board and check for loads coming out of that city, the destination point of your previous load. A quick check of the demand for your next move. At this point, uh, deadhead settings will come in very handy. Perhaps uh, there is nothing within a 30 mile radius, but you see that a major city is only 60 miles away. Well, in that case, increase your deadhead and you'll most likely see many more options. <music>